Passers by walking on broken glass past the charred and distorted remains of a car destroyed when the bomb inside it exploded next to the Church of Our Lady of Salvation in Baghdad. More than 50 people died when the church was occupied and Christians held hostage inside. Two priests leading the service were shot dead. Down the road, another church, St Joseph's. Six security guards on duty the Sunday I went to ask the priest, Father Sa'ad, about these incessant attacks on Iraqi Christians. Sometimes I ask myself, is it worth it to live all this for, for democracy or for freedom? Sometimes I, I hate freedom, I hate democracy because I saw so many people die. Sometimes I say, maybe it's not worth it. In 2003, there were more than a million Christians in Iraq. Now, there are about 300,000. The assault on them, and they were a largely respected and protected community under Saddam Hussein, began in 2004, when bombs were placed outside five churches. Since then, more than 60 Iraqi churches have been bombed. Priests have been kidnapped and often murdered. On Christmas Day 2013, 37 people were killed in three bomb attacks on Christian targets. When ISIS fighters invaded Mosul, they gave Christians an ultimatum, convert to Islam or we will kill you. The Baghdad church bell summons the faithful to Sunday mass at the Chaldean Catholic Church of St. Joseph. The choir and the congregation fill the space with sound, but the pews are almost empty. And if the parish priest, Father Sa'ad, had also decided to leave, it would have been understood. I was kidnapped. I finished the Mass. They took me from my church and they just kept me for 28 days. How did they take you? I was in my car. Two cars stopped me, one from the front and the other from the back shooting in the air actually we stopped and they opened the door and they put me in their car and they went eyes banded blindfold and hand behind the back there were calm days and bad days very bad days sometimes they were, they actually hit me with the cables and other things yeah. they threatened me in several times in these 28 days we are going to kill you, and I thought that it was it was my end. But anyway, God's, God had, a, had another plan for me. How did you react? How did you behave? Uh, to tell you the truth, I, I have actually this faith, this internal calm that I am not alone. This is my faith. I believe in Christ. I believe that everyone who believes in Christ, that Christ will be with him, even in the, in, the, in the bad days. That was my force. I spoke with him so many times about so many things. They asked me about several things, about my religion, about, about my faith, about uh, Trinity. We had discussions about these things between us. What did they want? They said to me that uh, we will use you to release other prisoners from the Americans. I said that. I don't have anything to do with the Americans. They are Christian, that's right, but they, they, we can't say that I am an American. I am not. I am an Iraqi. I was always actually uh, explaining to them this thing. How did they release you? What did they do? They, they, they took money, actually, from the church and from my family. I had a mother and brother here at that time. Now I don't have anyone here. I am alone. Actually. They've all gone? They're all gone, actually. My mother and my brother and sisters are in Sweden. I have two sisters in, in Cardiff. And at the last day, actually, there was a discussion between me and them. They, he said to me that we are going today to finish it. Finish it. I thought that they are going to kill me. They took me with the car for one hour and uh, they let me out. One of them said to the guards, 
okay, release his hand and uh, release his eyes. And he told me, don't, don't look back. I couldn't believe it, but anyway, I did it. Father Sa'ad, an engineering graduate from Baghdad University who went on to study theology in Rome.